Good afternoon, friends. Um, after completing the parametric uh, test under testing your hypothesis, the next turn is for non-parametric test, correct? Now, under the non-parametric test, all of us are aware the moment we are hear about you need to go ahead and apply non-parametric test, we just look and uh, we say, okay, I have to do this, this or this. That is, for example, um, at least if you ask me, I have worked with Wilcoxkin, Man Whitney, then uh, Kruskal Wallace and Friedman, right? Durbin, Skilling's, Mac test only when I was learning about, um, I would say, uh, time series data or even uh, panel data when I went over to some of the workshops and I learned over there that yes, these tests are also available. However, there were other non-parametric tests uh, which I learned through Excel Stat, and that is the reason I'm welcoming each one one of you to know that when we talk about non-parametric test again uh, the lines have been drawn and you can understand that there are these are the different varieties not that all of them can be applied on the non-parametric um, as a non-parametric test uh, to uh, test your own to examine your own hypothesis that's what I would say however here they are talking about the first one distribution fitting so that means they are going to focus on the distribution of your data comparison of two distribution and the tests are there. We will see those things also. Mood test. I haven't done. Now, I just know that, yes, uh, you know, if your moods are changing, this thing is taking place. However, here you have got a mood test. We will learn more about it. One sample, uh, Wilkoskin uh, signed rank test. A comparison of two samples, which all of us are aware of. Comparison of key samples. Now, if you come over to data mining or machine learning, you will be understanding what key samples are. Durbin, a uh, skilling smack test, page test. Now, I haven't... Uh, I mean, applied anywhere and I don't know also much about it. However, through this uh, particular tool, I learned it. Cochrane's Q test because I keep working on the meta-analysis or systematic literature review through Cochrane. However, I never applied again Q test or MacNema test. MacNema test, definitely, yes, when you are doing your meta-analysis, systematic literature, you will be seeing that, yes, those steps are being taken care of. And I think uh, there are individuals who are uh, taking the work workshops and you would be able to understand uh, that yes it's a part of your uh, meta-analysis step so these three ones Cochrane skew test McNema test and Cochrane mantle uh, Hansel test these are applied exclusively for the meta-analysis also side by side now one sample uh, runs test this also um, I haven't seen many of us uh, taking care of it so however under the examination of hypotheses for the non uh, for the application or the implementation of non-parametric tests. These are the various techniques that you have uh, got in front of you. So I think uh, again, uh, one is aware that yes, which test is being taken care. So the tables have to be revised. We need to understand, um, you know, for the set of the given hypotheses, which of these things are going to be applied where and how and how to interpret those results also. So very soon I would be uh, taking care because there are just few more tabs available so each one of them would be explained with appropriate steps the theory the concept the basic the fundas behind it and then we will proceed further with these kind of tests also till then keep watching for the next video of mine which i'll be talking more on testing for our own outliers which are present in our data till then thank you for watching take care bye